United States break on our ideas and it's time for the press preview. First look at uh, the front pages and see what the papers are saying and let's go straight to our own dear sister publication, the state newspaper. Uh, it's saying uh, FG, that is federal government, Nigeria risk kills if petrol subsidy is removed. Claims we are leaving the country much more secure than we met it. NMDPRA expresses concern over growing oil theft. And then just below that, those riders, leadership tussle. Abga orders police to arrest ex national chairman Okorie, others. And then, uh, well, let, let's just uh, see a picture there, but let's just go to the where you have the orange strip, Galadima. Using capacity as parameter for presidency or be not comparable to Kwan Kwaso, two riders there says ex Anambra governor has a lot to learn. PDP berates APC Labour Party declares placeholder APC creation. All right, and just above it, uh, money laundering ICPC probes completed. Unoccupied housing estates in Abuja, Lagos, Sport Harcourt. And then just uh, at the top mast, again, Zenit wins best commercial bank in Nigeria. It has a rider named Best Corporate Governance Bank at World Finance 2022 Awards. All right, let's go on to the next paper. Uh, the Punch newspaper is leading with 20 directors just saw to replace fired uh, Accountant General of the Federation and uh, 20 resident electoral commissioners retire in August as tenure ends. That's from the Independent National Electoral Commission. Inet Clement as arsonists, arsonists burn Enugu office. All right, the Nation newspaper on its front page, you'll wonder, is PDP not trying to shoot itself in the leg? Weakest camp gives are you the chairman. More school condition to back their presidential candidate, Atiku. Still better, PDP candidate and says party chair will lead campaign. Party big weeks to lobby Rivers governor for support. And then Itman, federal government agency face off to worsen uh, petrol subsidy, one hopes not. Inside on, well, uh, that's too long for me to read. Akira Dolu, okay, sell the fans, uh, just like uh, the Zamfara State Governor Matawale. NMA runway to be shot. Zenit Bank, we just read it a while ago. All right, Oshun 2022. Somwolu, Kanduje, uh, Omishore, the party secretary, APC will win fair and square. INEC promotes better performance. Uh, SDP candidates to deploy IT. Adeleke assures uh, a war of varsity campus to get and their ticket. The leadership newspapers leading with amid rising insecurity. Uh, stakeholders want security architecture decentralized. Uh, there's more in the leadership. Ballot boxes destroyed as gunmen raise Enugu Ainek office. Ukraine war, federal government to absorb returning students into shut varsities. And Nigeria spends 11.8 trillion naira, 8.2 billion dollars on debt servicing in seven years. And the Guardian, they'll be done. The Guardian will be done with the local papers and go international. The spider assurances, spiritual coups worsen in Lagos and Abuja. Ohaneze knocks Kwan Kwaso as Kaladima dismisses NMP major talks with the Labour Party. Uh, the international papers, The Times, get tough with petrol protesters, uh, police told in the UK. And uh, that's a picture of Nick Kyrgios. Uh, he's made it into the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. Good for him. And The Guardian, uh, The Guardian... The Guardian International, can we have that? All right. Uh, Parliament has to act over sexual abuse claims. Uh, mass killing at Chicago 4th of July parade. And BBC admits it received complaints against uh, DJ. And the I paper says cabinet angry at defending Johnson again. Financial Times Germany records deficit in goods trade for the first time in 30 years. I think we should bring in 
Emmanuel Bello at this juncture. Emmanuel, good morning. I'm glad to have you on this Tuesday. Good morning. All right, let's look at this day. It says, federal government, Nigeria risks chaos if petrol subsidy is removed, you know, and then claims that we're leaving the country much more uh, secure than we met it, arguably so, of course. And then there is this uh, Galadima using capacity, a parameter for presidency, or be not comparable to Kwankwaso, says ex Anambra governor has a lot to learn, doesn't everybody? PDP berates APC Labour Party, uh, declares placeholder APC creation. Uh, you want to take the three or the two, uh, Emmanuel? Uh, well, let's start with the politics. Um, um, in the, if yeah, uh, Abuba Galadima was on the on the network yesterday, and that interview was very bloody. Um, it's, his attempts are sounding the way he sounds. It's uh, Abuba Galadima uh, in his he rendered his best, if you if you if you wish, he, and he was sounding very well like uh, you know the surrogates of not just uh, Congo, but of course a mouthpiece of uh, the, the northern power. A lot of people watching that interview yesterday, especially on the socials, were really, really uh, angered by his tone and uh, the blunt way he was putting uh, certain things. Uh, and that is not how, what you do uh, in an election year where you actually need all the side. Uh, because uh, speaking, of course, Congo so earlier had also almost in turn the same thing, you know, downplaying, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the influence or the place of, uh, you know, it's a, a very important segment of, of, the, con of the country uh, in election, the Southeasterners. Now, when you do that uh, you, you are annoying you are angering people uh, this is the time to talk like a statement this is the time to actually talk to people so uh, those statements yesterday were very very uh, you know whether you like it or not it's inciting it's annoying uh, a lot of young people that I spoke with after the interview were really really annoyed saying that look uh, you cannot uh, downplay them in the way you are doing and also expect their support uh, but having said that, uh, some of the things that Boa Galadima was pointing to, uh, if, he, if he says that, for instance, uh, Peter Obi can't make it without Northern Power, uh, is the same question you could ask. Uh, so can they not actually make it without any other part uh, of the country? That is one question to ask. The other question to ask is that, okay, so if you think uh, Peter Obi should take the second place, uh, don't you worry that he will lose his base? Uh, because that is where this merger, or the, a lot of people believe that he's dead on arrival. Because either way, it is here you lose. Uh, tales, tales you lose. Tales if you lose. if Conquesto decide, okay, fine, for whatever reason, for political expediency, let's you know trade horses and uh, let me shift to the other side and be the running mate. He also loses his his base, uh, basically. And Uba uh, Uba actually even said that much yesterday. That look, because some people say, why not? Why not do the same thing? Why not move over and become the uh, the vice president to Peter? He said, look, if. Kwankwaso tries that. Uh, they not would rather go for a presidential candidate. Why would they want to play uh, second field? But it's, it applies too. If Obi decides, for instance, say, okay, fine, I'm going to, for whatever reason, because yesterday Uma Galima was saying, uh, Buba Galima was saying, look, let's do what is expedient. Let's win elections. Uh, and this is how you go, how you win election. You look at the arithmetic, you forget sentiments, nice. uh, you plot it, and then you win it. Yeah, well, that's, that's so true. So invariably, the major is dead on arrival. Yes, it looks so, because if if Peter will be even for the kind of expediency Boba Galadina is talking about, decides that, okay, fine, let me play the role of a vice president, he loses his base. Because his people has vowed that, look, if you dare, if you agree to be to take those positions, you are gone. So uh, it, I just pity, you know, you, whether you like it or not, you, it's a pitiful situation here because both sides are on, on this path that is already dead on arrival, indeed, like you rightly put it. So um, what they should do now is actually scout for vice president's material from the places where uh, they are talking about. Oh, well, the rescue party has collapsed at this thing. They are, they are collapsed. They have given to Obi, given in to Obi. Whether the rescue will rescue anything is another thing. <laughs> so <laughs> those are those are the issues around uh, the subject. But uh, like I started saying, it's it, this is a time to uh, you know to build fences. He was saying that it's a new party, it's new Nigeria. One way to build a new Nigeria is to talk, is not to talk down on the people, uh, which will they are, you know tell them that they are not they are not consequential. Because for most young people yesterday, especially for the obedient crowd, that's what they heard. What they heard is. Boba Galadima saying, look, you are not important in the equation. If you want to be president, you have to start from the second place. And a lot of them couldn't swallow that. Although Boba Galadima tried, we're going into history even at times. And even bringing the issue of age into the uh, factor, he, he, he threw everything at it, but it didn't sound so right. Uh, the, 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 the interview didn't help uh, his, his case at all, or even help Congo. So. 
Hey, Emmanuel, it's, it's, it's rather interesting. A, a lot of people, uh, political players and stakeholders, claim that uh, Peter Obi has no stake in the election coming in 2023, but somehow they keep singing his voice, his tone, his music. What's happening here? Well, you know, if we're still going to go back to yesterday's uh, interview, though, as, as terrible as it is, uh, 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 Kenneth, uh, Buba Galadima was also pointed to that. He was saying that, look, it's just hysteria. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, the, the, the mathematics or the arithmetic does not fit in, and it doesn't help that, look, uh, you can't do this without, you know, negotiating your position. And, he, you know, he went down memory lane to show how over the years there have been an attempt to, say, okay, look, uh, it, uh, an Igbo should be the vice president and maybe secure vote. But uh, in most cases, uh, you know, those vice presidents don't actually even get the votes that they are looking for. He went through all of that yesterday. So that's part of the problem. There, yes, there's uh, a lot of, you know, it's, it's become a movement, like you're saying, Kenneth. Uh, but there are people who are also saying that how feasible it is in the real sense of the word. Uh, but even if you're going to discuss that, especially if you're in politics and you're a politician, uh, you don't say it in such a way that it will look as if that, that, that very, you know. Uh, Imani, that is yeah. one thing to get is why is the movement happening? Is it on the pages of the social media or real? numbers that's the question to ask there's whether you like it or not indeed there's what they call the obedient crowd it's there and um, you know peter will be also presents himself he sold him his candidature very well especially among uh, uh young people you know he talks about probity he talks about a new face he's bringing a new he's bringing all sort of new things uh to the movement that is catching on that is very enticing that is very interesting uh, you know it's captivating okay uh, but those who talk about rare politics are now asking that how do they number fitting what about the margins what about the you know the the the, the, the salesmanship across uh, all the divide because you can't just be president just from coming from a segment you, you need can't. to build bridges across and what can't. about the negotiations that go into that you all the other parties are also dealing with this issue by the way indy yeah. uh, but a lot of people thinking that peter will be can do more with a lot of uh, politicking around the don't issues. forget that it took a pc a merger to beat pdp and the mm. PC was a big party. All right, but let's look at the nation. The nation. Weakest camp gives Ayu. Ayu must go condition to back Atiku. Uh, Emmanuel, is PDP really thinking about being a great competitor against APC with what is happening? Uh, India, I even want to ask that it looks as if right now the PDP is com is contesting against itself already. <laughs> the, the contest is on, and uh, PDP same thing. The APC is not even at this point uh, facing the the opposition, the main opposition party. Uh, but PDP on its own is beginning to face. You know, the, the daggers are drawn at uh, the, at, each, at themselves. So. It's, um, it's a serious problem, and that you are right, uh, but this is, is a serious concern for them because now Wiki is saying one thing and they are saying another. They might, at the end of the day, have to find ways of, uh, of you know, solving some of this problem. Already they, on this network, uh, the spokesperson of the party say uh, the PDP is doing everything it can to reach out to Wiki and find a way of actually, uh, you know, appeasing him. He's become a god now, that uh, some god that, that should be appeased so that, uh, you know, this, this water will flow uh, very smoothly. Smoothly. So that's the as Atiku gets back this week, I'm sure uh, from Dubai, that is what I think, or from wherever it's coming from, that would be one of the things he is going to be faced with. Or else PDP will have to will battle itself up to the point of the general campaign. It could be weakened by that. Mm. Uh, Emmanuel in Abuja, uh, the petrol queues are not disappearing. It feels like it's the air, it feels like the air we breathe now. We wake up to queues, we go to work, we get back. There are the queues. I was just pointing to where my car is <laughs> in the, on the long queue. Well, yes, but th that's, that's a problem, and um, it's embarrassing. I think uh, one of the papers was uh, saying that, I think Guardian, the Guardian, Guardian newspaper yeah. is saying that uh, it's, it, it's, it's probably going to just lose it, despite, and I like the way the Guardian put it, despite all the reassurances. And we've, we saw those reassurances even earlier in the year, where we are told that it's a matter of weeks. Um, but the back and forth between the oil marketers on one hand and the federal government, it's become, it's, you know, it's eroding everything away. But um, you saw that story in this day where clearly, uh, 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 you know, the federal government uh, is saying something else. He's saying, look, we're not removing those subsidies. You, we can't, we can't afford to do it. But I, an aspect of that story that I think, and Emmanuel Adi reports have been, you know, hinting on that almost every other time. This day has stayed on this, this story more than I think any other medium, talking about the oil theft. 
uh, the fact that part of the crisis we are faced is the fact that this oil, the crude oil, is stolen away. So who is doing anything about it? Um, a serious country with serious leadership will look at that direction and do everything in its power. Lai Mohamed is saying that, look, if we, if we take care of the host communities uh, very well, uh, this will not happen. But they must go beyond that. I don't think it's just about, uh, it's just about compensation. I think there's criminality at the heart of it and that something has to be done about it. A decisive decision, an action to stop those oil theft is really really affecting a whole lot of things people should go under if people don't go under then it might continue just like you said a decisive decision action ought to be taken to uh, allow Nigerians a breath of fresh air we we'll have oil and yet we we'll have to stand on cues it's 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 it's, it's heart-rendering really thank you so much Emmanuel Bello for your preview